Hello, I'm Monica Price and welcome to Cuppa TV. On today's show, I'm joined by Dennis Moss, a man who's going to be travelling with the NFL, raising money for prostate cancer. I'm also joined by Lily May, a businesswoman here in the West Midlands, who talks to us about her charity work. Finally, I'm joined by Christopher Vermel, who talks to us about becoming Mr England very quickly. And also John Rushton, our emotions expert, is here today joining us to tell us more about self-esteem and opportunities. Today is Dennis Moss, singer-songwriter, but also a man who loves to travel, and he's going to be talking to us about what he's just about to embark on. So, welcome to Cup of TV, Dennis. Thanks for inviting me. So lovely to see you. And Dennis, you are a singer-songwriter, but you're doing this amazing thing. Tell us what you're going to be doing. I have three passions in my life at the moment. I'm a big fan of the NFL, which is American football. I'm also a musician, and I love to travel. So I'm going to go to all 31 NFL stadiums in one regular season, which is 17 weeks. And before anyone says anything, there is 32 teams, but yeah. two of them <laughs> in New York, they share a stadium. Right. So I'm going to try my hardest to get to every one of those stadiums within 17 weeks. Wow. So you're going to visit every stadium. And when are you going to do that? You're going to do that this side of yep. this year? This, this in year? In two weeks' time, I leave for Boston on September the 8th. Wonderful. Now, why? tell us why are you going to do that? Uh, many reasons. One's, the first one's a personal thing because um, I love the NFL <coughs> and it's a crazy idea I, I kind of devised. <coughs> crazy <coughs> ideas are always often the best ideas. Well, I did a big <laughs> tour a couple of years ago, starting in New York and I finished in Brazil at the World Cup. And when I came home from that, I thought I had such a great time. I wanted to do another adventure. Mm -hmm. So this was one of the things that I had in mind as I'm a big fan of the NFL. So here we are, two weeks away. Excellent. And what are you actually going to be doing when you visit the stadiums? Um, I'm going to be watching the game for the of obvious course, thing. Yes. I'm going to be trying to. I'm going to film everything. Um, I'm going to put it on social media. Um, I'm going to try to get some of the soundtrack to be my own songs. I've actually written a soundtrack song called "Like a Touchdown," that I'm trying to get the clubs to play in all of the stadiums, uh, say half time or on radio stations, just to give me a bit of a publicity as a songwriter. Mm. And you're going to be doing this raising money for prostate cancer, is that right? Yes, I mean the tour is called the Wrong Shape Balls Tour for two kind of different reasons. The, the first one's the obvious because of the shape of the football. Yes. We use a soccer ball, they don't. Secondly, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine named Kevin, was diagnosed with prostate cancer about six months ago. And as soon as he told me, the first thing I said to him was, you've got the wrong shape balls. And because of that, the first thing he said in return, he said, that should be the name of your tour. Mm. So, so that is why I'm calling it, it the wrong shape ball Absolutely. Sort. And I mean, prostate cancer has actually been in the news quite a lot recently. Mm. I'm calling on men, you know, to be aware of it. And do you know much about it yourself, Dennis? Is, has that made you think about, you know, your own health and what well, you're doing? It, it does, because after my friend was diagnosed, I actually went for the test myself because I'm in my late 40s now. And I thought it was about time that I did it just, just in case. And what I want to highlight to a lot of people is, is that prostate cancer is the most common cancer for men. Uh, fact mm. but also what's really important is if it's found early enough it's quite easily cured so you know us men are like we don't like to go to the doctors however the girls will go if they get a sore throat or a cough if you like whereas we won't so I just want to kind of bring it bring to the table the attention that you know if you are feeling any kind of symptoms just get to your GP get it checked out because if you do it can be found and it can be cured and you know that presumably because your friend was diagnosed this is this triggered really then the reaction and you this is why you decided to embark on this NFL yeah so now that's a big thing you're doing you couldn't just go around England why no. why did you decide to do it in America well because the NFL is from the States yes. um, they're trying to get a team over here in London and one of the places I'm going to be going is to, to watch, a, watch a game is with a guy called Shard Khan, and mm -hmm. Mr. Khan owns Fulham. So I sent him a little cheeky message to say, uh, is there any chance of me watching a game with you? And believe it or not, they come back to me and said, yes, so I'm actually watching a game with the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars in the Jacksonville Stadium on week 11. Is that here in the tour. UK? No, this is in the, it, States, in the States, in Jacksonville. Wonderful. So, so you, I mean, so people are already engaging with you. They are. They and certainly are. Is that what you'd like to happen? Definitely. Dennis? One of the big things about my tour is I want to interact with the fans. That's really, really important. 
I'm going to be doing tailgating, which is like where you get outside the stadium before the game where everyone's cooking burgers and barbecues and drinking beer and stuff. So I'm going to interact with people doing this. I'm going to be trying to hang out with fan clubs if I can. And one of the early things I was looking to do as well was to try and see a game with a famous person who supports each team. Oh, yes. And I've done some crazy things of trying to contact these famous people that I know follow certain NFL teams. And I'll give you an example. The guy Bradley Cooper that's in the movie that The Hangover, mm -hmm. he's a huge fan of a team called the Philadelphia Eagles. And he's been doing a show in the West End. Uh, he's the Elephant Man. So I went to the back door and left a letter for him to, um, for him so to reply am, to me and say, yes. look, are you going to come and watch a game with me? And yeah. uh, sadly, he hasn't replied oh. yet. <laughs> <laughs> he but might he not might, have got he the may do. <laughs> but I mean, you, so you really are looking to, you know, contact the contact people yeah and engage with them mm. and when you and how are you are you doing all this yourself you're going to fly out to america yeah. and how are you going to get from each of the stadiums completely independent um i've met a lot of people on social media at the moment and my plan is always to do hostels because you tend to f you meet great people in hostels and what you find in hostels is if you're going on to somewhere else you normally bump into someone who's already been there and they'll say i'll oh, go to this restaurant or get this cheap food here or do this while you're here in Boston, New York, Philadelphia, wherever. So, but there's another opportunity for me to do couch surfing, and that's um, what's that called? Couch surfing. Couch is, surfing. What couch surfing is? It's a place where you join a kind of a website and you host people in your home. So, if I go to places like New York or anywhere in the states, I go onto the website couch surfing and I'll find somebody that's looking to host somebody like me. Mm. So I'll just drop them an email and say, like, I'm coming over. I'm an English guy. I'm travelling around watching the NFL. Uh, would it be possible for you to put me up for a couple of nights when I come to San Diego or Kansas? And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that they say they yes. Say yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll be doing that and public transport, using yeah. public transport? Well, most people say to me, why don't you drive? Well, first of all, I don't drive over here. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's on the wrong side of the road. And uh, I like travelling by buses and trains because it gives you that moment to reflect. Maybe meet more people? Yeah, you do meet. Uh, the hostels is the place where you meet so many good people. So, and it's a part of the process of engaging with the fans and I like traveling by, by coach between destinations because it's a time for me to get the laptop out and do a lot of the stuff that mm. I haven't really got the time for while I'm running around going to the stadiums and yes. doing doing other things. So it's, I mean it's exciting. It is exciting. Very exciting. So when do you go? You go? I go two weeks tomorrow. Two weeks tomorrow and then it's how long is it going to take you to do all those games? Um, well 17 weeks is, is the standard set right. schedule of the okay. NFL. I've got a couple of days where if it doesn't quite work out, I'm in a little bit of trouble because I'm trying to get from one place to the next and there's a game the following day. Oh, right. And some I of them see. are a little bit of a way apart by, by roads. Yes. America's one, a huge country, of course. Massive, so yes. massive. And basically, the schedule that I've got, it took me probably two or three weeks to work out the route because mm. I'm trying to get as close to each one as I can. But unfortunately, if one of the home teams or one of the teams, say from New York to Boston, if one's at home, one's away, then I can't do them on the same kind of continuation. No. So I'm kind of zigzagging a Across. few times. So yeah. unfortunately, I've, I've got to do that because I've got to try out and work out a route that I can get to every stadium within those seven, 17 I, weeks. I was going to say, it seems important that you, you get to every game. Oh, it is. And then when you're there, are you going to be you know, talking to people? And, I mean, you said you're going to be on the gates and, and talking to people. What, what are you actually going to be doing? Are you going to be telling them, you know, this is what you should be aware of? Are you going to be talking to them? What are you going to be doing? One of the things I want to do, I want to <laughs> highlight the fact that a London team would be great to mm. come over here because I think it's on the fence at the moment and I, I love American football because it's American so I'm really 50-50 do I want a London team to come yes but the traditionalist in me mm, I'm not sure see I love it because it's an American game mm. so I want to kind of highlight that and the guy that I'm meeting the Jacksonville Jaguars he is the man to be talking about with that because mm. he's the guy who's looking to bring a franchise over to London mm. So that's one thing, the charity aspect, my music, which is important. I'm going to be in Nashville recording a new song. Um, and any particular charity you're supporting or are you going to support many? Um, I think it's going to be many because I've been contacted on social media by quite a few. And it's all around the umbrella of the prostate cancer yes. situation. Like, So yeah. it's Prostate Cancer UK or yes. Men United. Mm -hmm. There is one in Dallas called Zero to Prostate, I think. Mm -hmm. But I need to kind of tie up some loose ends with the people before I fly out on the research eight. to do as well. I, I do, yeah. And as a singer-songwriter, you said you're going to go to Nash. You're going to go to Nashville and record a song. And what's the song called again? 
The new song I'm going to do is it's, it's somebody's telephone number. It's called 4573269. <laughs> and it's about a girl who goes in the bar, sees a guy that she likes. He keeps looking over at her and she, she tells him, this is my phone number. You better be quick before I change my mind. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a really, really catchy, typical Nashville country song. And that's what you're going to be doing. I'm so going you, to do that. So you're going to do that, record that there. And is that yep. going to be kind of part of you, what you're doing with the NFL stadiums? Are you going to kind of use that as a platform or you haven't really thought about that yet? Not, not really, because I don't think country music really ties in with the NFL. The song that I have on my website is called Like a Touchdown. And that was written purposely for my tour. That song is about the way you feel when you're with somebody special is how you feel when, if, for example, you like a football team or a rugby team, whoever, when the goal goes in, you feel that euphoria and you think, so I'm trying to kind of use it as a, as a metaphor for that's how you feel when you're with your loved one, how you feel when that goal goes in. It's like, yeah. <laughs> and it's a really great track. It's a catchy, up-tempo, rock, typical 80s kind of song. And I'm hoping to get it on the radio. So that's going to be the one that's going to be, you know, as I say, yep. using it, you'll be promoting it. That's the soundtrack to my And I was just tour. about to ask you, is, is that available to people to It is. They can, well, they can buy it on my website. They can. They can go to my website, which is www.therongshapeballs.com. Mm -hmm. They can buy it for 99 cents uh, or give me whatever they feel they think is worth. Mm. And oh, they didn't want to go down the route of this the go get funding uh, angle because I wanted to give something back. Mm. I didn't want to kind of do something and say to people, well, support me on this tour without giving them something back. So that was the plan to try and help finance my tour, which is going to cost me a lot of money. Mm to try and get back a little bit of the money that I've put in, and uh, that was the original plan. And raise some money, obviously, for your charities that yes, you're, to you're, do you're that supporting. Too. Yep. And I mean, you, so this is good. So 17 weeks, this is going to be into next year. Yeah. <laughs> this well, is going to be a, a long time here. It is. The, the actual last game I'm actually going to be yes, at is when on, is the last it's game? January the 3rd. Right. But after that is a thing called the playoffs. Right. So I'm still going to be there, and if, if my or our team, the Dallas yes. Cowboys, get into yes. the, the playoffs, I'll be going back to Dallas or wherever I can. Yeah. If I'm kind of nearby, if, if they play in New York and I'm in San Francisco, then maybe I won't. But then it goes right through to the, to the Super Bowl. And I'd like to be in America for the Super Bowl because who knows, I might meet some influential people mm. along the way mm. and they might say, well, look, we like this guy, you know, why don't you come to the Super Bowl with us? So I'm kind of hoping that that will, that will come out. And, and what's, your, what's your main aim for the whole of this? What, I mean, you, it's, it's an exciting you know, exciting project that you've taken on, one that's hopefully going to raise lots of money for the charities you decide to donate to. Mm. But what's, what's, what was, I know that we spoke about the fact that it was your friend, Kevin, mm. who, you know, initially gave you the idea. But what do you want to get at the end of this, Dennis? What would you like to see at the end happen? Um, first of all, I'm going to have the time of my life because I love American football. So it's going to be very, very enjoyable for me to zigzag across America watching all these amazing teams. Secondly, I'd like to promote my music especially in Nashville, because I've recorded three songs there before, and I'm doing the next one there again. And I just love the country music in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I mean, people get this perception of country music, very kind of like Dolly Parton, very old school. Well, it's not. It's more t towards rock music these days, and uh, it's like a rock country crossover, and, and it's fantastic music, and mm -hmm. I, I fell in love with it. So I'd like to get involved a bit more in Nashville with country music, and just have a good time really. Just have a good time. <laughs> and as a singer-songwriter, you've been doing that for many years. I wouldn't say I'm a singer-songwriter. I have, used to be in a rock band called Asbo right. and we had a fantastic singer uh, and unfortunately he was from Venezuela and he, he's, um, his passport ran out so he had to leave and he was such a great singer but I didn't want to give up the dream so I became the singer of the band and we kind of changed a little bit of a direction. We wasn't as kind of rock, we turned to more like rock pop. Mm -hmm. So do I sing? Yes. Am I a good singer? Not particularly. If I can find somebody <laughs> better than me, I always will. But I enjoy singing. I'm not afraid to pick a guitar up if there's mm. people around, it's a party or I'm in a bar. Uh, I'm not scared to do that. But am I a singer? Mm, mm. The, jury, the jury's out on that one. So if, when you finish this wonderful 17-week epic journey you're going to do. Have you got something else in mind that we'd I like have. to do? And oh. you're well, you're going to laugh when I say it. Come I'm on gonna then, have tell a, us. And I'm going to have a holiday. <laughs> the reason why... We'll take a nice break. 
I do. I think after the American football thing's all done, I might go to some wacky places like Alaska or Cuba because I'm a big traveller and I'm an adventurer. Mm. So I, I think I will need a holiday. And it yeah. sounds crazy, but it's going to be really hard to do mm. what I'm doing. Yeah. Sometimes it's going to be amazing, but other times it's going to be quite difficult. And you're going to be by yourself, aren't you? I'm going to be by myself. But the thing about travelling alone, you never ever will. Uh, you're never on your own because you just attract people. Being on your own, you just see other people that are single travellers and you might be at the bus station going from one place to the next and you end up sitting with some guy and you have a, a bit of banter and a connection and then he might hang around you for a couple of days. Travelling alone is fantastic. Mm. And when, you, when you're travelling and you say so you meet lots of people, again, is that what kind of inspires you to keep doing that? Is that yeah. something you really, really like to do? Definitely. I mean, I was in Brazil for the World Cup last year and I met some of the most amazing people who are going to be my friends for life all around the world in Australia, Mexico, England, Amer America, Canada. And uh, just being around these other people that have got the same passions that you have is, is fantastic. Mm. And they, they really support me. I mean, on Facebook and Twitter, they're always saying, you know, good luck with your tour and I love your pictures. And yeah, it's, it's fantastic meeting people when you travel. So you're going to have a great time. Well, come back and join us again, Dennis. I'd love tell, to. Us, tell us how you get on. I wish you every success with it. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in to talk about it today. Thanks very We're much. going to take a quick break now. So come back and join me again in just a minute. Welcome Lily Mae Wheeler, who is a businesswoman here in the West Midlands, joins me today to talk about her charity event that she's organising. Lily Mae, thank you for coming on to Cup of TV. It's okay, thank you. L lovely to see you. And you. So, Lily Mae, you've been involved in various charity events, but before we get to that and what you're doing now, yep. as a businesswoman, you're a businesswoman here in the West Midlands, yep. and you have your own hair salons, is that right? I do, yes. Yeah, so tell us, how did you get into that? Um, random, really. Um, I was at school studying psychology, and... Um, yeah, it was just, I wanted to go to Australia, so yes. apparently the easiest way was to go into hairdressing, so that's, that is, it's no glorified it, one, yeah. to <laughs> Barbie dolls, hair, that's it. just, yes. that's it, but yeah, yeah I just realised I was good at it, and yeah. yeah, enjoy it, I like the people side of it as well as making them look nice, so that's how I got into hairdressing. And as a businesswoman here in the West Midlands, yeah. do you feel this is a really good place to have a business, you know, from a woman perspective, being a woman in business? Um, yeah, um, everyone's very friendly in the Birmingham, so um, yeah, yeah, it's good. You I like enjoy it. it. Yeah, I enjoy it. I love it. I love my clients. They are. I love the social aspect of it. I love mm. them coming in, having a cup of tea, and doing their hair, taking them. Sometimes they can be feeling a bit down, and then they come in and you know do their hair, have a chat, and they go out and they feel happy. So that makes me happy. So yes, yeah. I always think hairdressers they get, must get to hear lots of stories. Um, do you know you learn to you kind of you do hear a lot, but then as long as you know they don't, it's not, you don't take it do home. You switch off. Yeah, you switch. Do, yeah. You don't, not in an ignorant way, no. but like they'll say things that sometimes they might even not. You know, you yeah. know what it's like. So you do. You just you learn to just focus yeah. on what you're doing. Yeah, and yeah. just. Yeah, get on become a counsellor as opposed to a yeah. hairdresser. But so, tell me how you got involved with your charity events that you've been it's doing. It's just always something I've wanted to do from little. Like, I just always wanted to do charity work. Always, I mean, for years and years and years, I've been going on about doing a charity ball. From, I think I found a letter back in two thousand and seven, and I wanted to do one then. And obviously, it's just it's a big thing yeah. to do. It's, Absolutely, a lot of organisation. Yeah, a lot yeah. of commitment. You've got to have the correct people around you to help you. You know. To to purchase the tickets to get to know about it and mm -hmm. you need a lot of support um but it's just really really i really gen genuinely genuinely believe in charity mm -hmm. I, I think you know you can have all this you can have all your lifestyle you can have all what you've got but it's important to give something back to somebody less fortunate than yourself or somebody struggling you know in depends on what it there's all sorts mm. of charity well, work there's some wonderful charities here in the uk and, yeah. and of course in the rest of the world so the one you particularly focused on this time with your charity ball tell us about that it's alzheimer's research uk um we're also now doing some part of um when the you know when at the end we are giving some to macmillan cancer research and the mikey abdu foundation um partly of macmillan it's very like i've always given to them and yeah, so I do that charity, the charity is you close support. to my heart. Yeah, yes. um, Mikey Abdu Foundation, like that's a great a great cause. Um, I do. I'm very close to his parents, and they're amazing, incredible people that do an awful lot for everyone else, and they do an awful lot for me. So I just wanted to give them something back as well. And then Alzheimer's Research UK. Um, I've had 
two mem family members die with, with, you don't really die of Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. you die with the disease. Um, both different stories. My nan, it was horrendous. Like she was, she went right back to a child and there was actually a clip of Still Alice that really made me from like, the film. from the film yeah. Still Alice and it really brought back as a child a memory of my nan and it was, and then I was sat in the, the cinema and I just thought that is the next charity ball. That's the next charity I'm picking, Alzheimer's Research UK. Not only for that as well, I think it's such a misunderstood charity, a misunderstood disease. People always automatically assume it's an old person's disease and we've all got to die of something. And that's the kind of response you do get. But it isn't. It's affecting people at 25, 35, 40. It's called early onset dementia. Um, and I think, you know, I don't think enough, the charity get enough support and enough help to actually let's find it, let's find a way to prevent it rather than, you know, if there isn't a cure, prevent mm. it. Uh, so yeah, I just, that's why I've So that was very, also. obviously very passionate about that, that particular charity. Yeah, so yeah. the ball itself then is going to be a big event here in the West Midlands. It's a very big event, yeah. So tell us about it. Well, it'll be at the Birmingham ICC on Saturday the 19th of September, mm -hmm. um, starting at 6.30. We've got lots of artists playing. Um, home you know people from Birmingham that are doing really well in the music industry um, we've got Indy Campbell she's performing for us Kimberly Miles she's performing for us um, we've got a man named Ian Lawton he's just like launched his own single and he's doing really well worldwide um, we've got other various artists yes, playing all. throughout the evening mm. so it's quite a musical um, be a musical ball and um, we've got a fashion show working with um, Dominique's boutique Henley Menswear just to put on it's just to, to put on a, a big, big show, really, yeah. by the sounds of it. Um, yes. got, it's a, it'll be a really, really good evening. We've got some surprises as well that we are keeping under our hat. Yes. Um, <laughs> but we, it's, we've had a lot of support from, a, from everywhere. From like, We've got people coming from Manchester, London, Bournemouth, like, everywhere. And have local businesses supported you as well? Have they have, yeah. We, we've had a lot of support. It wouldn't happen. I mean, it, there's 500 tickets, so it's a big ball. That's a lot. I mean, it sounds it's a big venue. doesn't sound mm. an awful lot to start, but it actually, when you when you're sitting down, you're trying to get 500 people in into to pick the, to get them home in on one evening. It's mm. very difficult, but we have had a lot of support, a lot more support than I ever ever mm. imagined. Um, Bailey and Harding, they have helped loads. They're doing all the the table. They're putting like gifts on the table. They've had a, they've had a, they've had a table. They always do a big hamper. They've mm -hmm. been amazing as well. We've had a lot of support. It's and been again, and Birmingham has got a lot of businesses, and yeah. here in the West Midlands, all around, yeah. you know, we have a lot of West Midland, you know, West Midland businesses who probably would want to get involved in something like yeah, that. Yeah, the thing I love about Birmingham as well, everyone wants to help everybody. It's very like that's all. It's mm. very communal, so it's it's not everyone's not out for themselves. Generally, they are they're very supportive of each other, so it's mm. it's nice. So I imagine you're very busy with all that organising. I actually can't begin to tell you. Yes. I don't sleep. I'm actually genuinely serious. I don't actually sleep. I go to bed, send in a message. I wake up to a message, responding, responding to a message. So I actually yes. genuinely don't sleep. But I'm not actually joking. And this is just one ball you've organised. And just one is, ball. Yeah, but it's yeah. because I'm well, one, every bit of energy and passion and is going into making sure that this is a success. So not only do we raise the money, but we raise awareness as well. And everyone that turns up, we have a good evening and we all go away and we're smiling and buzzing for the next one. Mm. You know, so mm. it's not... Oh, you're already talking about the next one. Yes. That's good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's yeah. just really... I'm genuinely really passionate about charity. I, I really am. And especially this... All charities fan for us, everyone. There's not one bad charity, is there? Um, but unfortunately, you can't help everybody, so... We're working our way through the list. These are the ones that you particularly wanted to do at the beginning. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's so many. There is mm. just, there is so many. And I take my hat off to anybody doing, even if it's just a sponsored walk or, you know, anything. It's just, it is amazing. Like me and Kim, I mentioned her, her earlier and a couple of her friends. We've gone out before and handed food to the homeless people. We don't tend to give them money because, well, for various reasons, mm. but we'll hand them clothes and food and stuff like essentials. Like in the winter, we gave them socks and like we went and collected thermal jackets and gave them them. So it just I just genuinely believe in giving back. Mm. I really do. And yeah. So you see yourself doing this uh, you know, in quite a, 
a long-term future really being yeah. a charity organizer and organizing various events would you yeah. consider organizing anything outside of the west midlands or would you always stay within the west midlands no 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 yeah mm. of course yeah mm. hopefully like that um it's yeah hopefully yeah, the ball's successful till yeah. you take it on to another another sort of another level really and organize another event yeah. and is there anything you would like to do for charity you know yourself Lily Mae is there anything you think you know I'd actually really like to do this be it whatever bungee like jump a, whatever <laughs> oh, no, I'll power on the bungee jump but um, I've yeah. done a lot of things like running walk yeah. you know you do yes running slash walking slash yeah. jogging slash dying yes <laughs> yeah I am um, I did the 5k um, run for breast cancer mm -hmm. with no training mm -hmm. and nearly died halfway around, <laughs> but I did it I've just signed up for the Alzheimer's sponsored walk um, I think it's September the 15th at Cannon Hill Park I'm not quite sure but I've just signed up for that um, I've done Macmillan coffee mornings and mm. I give every week and month to various different charities anyway so mm. yeah um, yeah I would do anything bar a bungee jump yes do not yes. get anyone asking me to do a bungee jump that's not happening that's or it. shave my hair off but yes. I'll do anything else, anything else that's it anything else maybe you could do actually hair maybe you could do something in your hairdressers you could have a sponsor I don't know create we, a do we give um a hair over so much if like someone comes in for quite a big haircut mm. we give it away to a charity called princess mm. hair trip uh, the little princesses hair mm. trust thing and we give away the hair to them to make wigs. they make them into wigs, don't they? Yeah, that's for, right. yes. for um, yeah. cancer patients. So, yeah, mm. so we do do, we are very charitable. Mm. Our salon, we're, uh, we believe in charity. Mm. So, um, and so for the future, for you, yeah. Lily mm -hmm. May, what would you like to do if you were coming back to join me in a year's time? Where would you like to be? Um, in, in business yeah. or in... in business. Um, and with your charity work. You can... Because it's taken up a lot of your time. Yeah. For me, it isn't so much about me, genuinely. It's about what I can give to others. Mm. Um, obviously, I, I'm, in a very, I, I'm, in a, I mean, I'm in a fortunate position to help others. So pretty much the same. But obviously, the ball have been an amazing success yes. and we're doing another one. <laughs> um, f yeah, just the same, really. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Just doing that. And the musical artists you've got, presumably you're still looking for people to join you and people to get involved. Are you we still are, yeah. We've just um, secured two um, major um, headline DJs for our after party after mm -hmm. the ball. So if people can't make the ball, then there's a you know, this second mm -hmm. location. Because time is always difficult, isn't it? For it people is, yeah. Very busy, people have very busy lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. you know, so that so presumably you did that as an idea to in case they couldn't come to the ball. Well, yeah, and also an event you know, some people might not want to go to the ball, but they want to support us. So there's there's an option of them they can either purchase a ticket or a table, or they can come to the after party. So yeah, mm. so we're trying to get a wide range. We're trying to please a wide range of people. Mm. So which is always very difficult sometimes. It is, but I always find like write it down. Like I always write everything down and put it in like, little columns and. Make sure it all flows, that it just flows nice. Organised. Organised, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today, Lily. Thank you. Come and join me again after the break, where I'm joined by Mr. England and along with John Rushton, our emotions expert. See you in a minute. Cup of TV. I'm now joined by Christopher Bramell and Mr. England and also John Rushton, our emotions expert. Thank you so much for joining me, Christopher. Okay. Can I call you Chris? Yeah, yeah. yeah you can. <laughs> and John, lovely to see you again. And thank you, you for coming back you. to Cup of TV. So, Chris, I'll start with you. Mr. England, fantastic. Well done. I know, it's so overwhelming. Best what feeling. What an I'll accolation that is. How are you feeling? Oh, well, <laughs> it's been a week now and I'm just still gobsmacked, still trying to get over it. It only hit me like a few days after the event when I was at home and I was sitting there and I was thinking to myself, I'm actually Mr. England, like yeah. meant to be one of the best lads in, in England and I'm just a normal lad from yeah. Liverpool, <laughs> so for I me. Mean, Chris, you, you won Mr. Liverpool. We've got yeah. lovely trophies here. This is, this is presumably the Mr. England, Mr. England one, yeah. trophy. Um, but how, 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 tell us about how you got into it. Well, at first, I'm just a normal lad from Liverpool. I work in a supermarket. So one day I just went to work. There I was, just beeping away on the tills. And one of the organisers, she shops in the supermarket I work in. And she was on the till opposite to me. And she got talking to the girl. And obviously, I noticed that they were speaking to each other and they were looking over at me. So I was thinking, what's going on? So I asked. And then she was like, oh, this lady's 
blah blah blah, blah from Mr. Liverpool and wants you to basically go for it. And I was like, at first, because I'd never done no modelling, nothing at all like that in my life. It's a bit sceptic and the girl like, is my mate from the market and she was like, yeah, he'll do it, he'll definitely do it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, just throw me in the deep end. And I went home, told my family and my mum and my girlfriend and her mum and my sister and everyone was just dead supportive, like, go for it, you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know where they'll take it in the future. And I was like, OK, I'll, I'll give it a go. So turned up on the night of Mr. L Mr. Liverpool, done rehearsals, done the show, you'd had three categories, ended up winning that. And winning that, when they shouted my name out, it took me like five, ten seconds before someone said to me, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was shocked about that. And so then that got me entry into Mr. England and brought me this title yeah. as well, where there was, there was seven categories in Mr. England, three out, three out of it. Well, there was six because one got cancelled on the night, but there was three in it and three out of it. And um, waking up to that, it was just a lot of hard training, just trying to get good in every round. So out of the competition, there was a talent round, which I entered with, I'm a DJ. So I've done a little two-minute mix. There's the charity round, where they come second, and Josh, who come third, come first. It, he was unbelievable to yeah, beat. That's Mr. Birmingham. Yeah, he Mr. Third, Birmingham, he come third. Yes, we've had him on the show. He's my wingman now, so he's going to help yeah. me with my charity <laughs> work for Mr. World. Yeah. Um, and then there was a, a publicity round as well where you had to get the most votes and whoever got the most votes I won the publicity round where they come second and then I got like 3,300 votes as well mm. and then on the night obviously they scored you on the three rounds of the night so I was just trying to do well in all of them but then in the morning you had your common sense round you had your sports round where they went and won the sports round because that's like I live in the gym I live yes, for the gym I go yeah. Monday to Friday to the gym so my mum always says to me, I'm there more than I'm actually in my actual home. So for me, that was, was the round, round that I wanted to win, which I, I knew I had to push myself for because that was my main round. But I mean, being Mr England, I mean, that's an incredible title. And I mean, you've only just started, as you said, you, you have done yeah. no modelling before, you've done nothing like it before. And when was your Mr Liverpool? Was that this year Mr. as well? Mr Liverpool was in July, yeah. So, so it's I mean, only to, to like win Mr. Liverpool and then and then go straight into Mr. England and win that, yeah, it, as you say, how has that left you feeling? Hey, I'm a li little bit shocked. Like before, <laughs> yeah. before Mr. Liverpool, me, me confidence and that weren't weren't high, weren't high at all. Like obviously, I could go up to people and speak to people, but it weren't high at all. But then winning Mr. Liverpool boosted me confidence to do things for Mr. England. And now Mr. England has b built myself esteem, confidence. And now I'm thinking to myself, if I can win that, what, what other stuff can I do? You know, there's, a, there's a lot out there which I can do. And winning Mr. England, um, you, and presumably you now have got duties that you have to carry out. Well, do you go across the UK promoting what, Mr. England and promoting the pageant? Yeah, definitely. Like, from a lad's point of view, the lad's competition's not seen as well as the girls. So for me now, one of my main things, I, I want to make the boys' pageant to be seen mm. a lot better than what it actually is. Because yeah. why can't people see, all right, it's beauty, but why can't lads have a bit of looking after themselves? We spoke about yes. this before, yes. John, didn't we? Let's bring John in here now, because we spoke about that with, you know, with, with Josh. You're, you know, you're, yeah. you, you've met him, and he's a, he's, I know he's a good friend of yours. But why do you think that is, John? That, you know, for, for guys, it's just not seen as the thing... I don't know how would you how would you describe it? If I don't you're know. It originally come from 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 a girls' pageant, didn't it? And then obviously with everything what's coming, you know, being sexist and stuff. So that's why I thought they brought the the boys' part in. But it's not like when I won Mister Mister England the next day. I had um, I went on the radio in the morning, but it was just on the phone. Where when the girl won Miss England the next day, she was opening shops. She went mm -hmm. all round Coventry in a car. So for me, it's still not up there. All right, <laughs> like I, I'm still overwhelmed that I, that that I won Mr. England. But for other lads in the future, I want them to feel the same as mm. like she had a cheer when we went out, and I just went out and stood on the stage with the three lads. Like mm. yeah. just little things like that, yeah. but mm. it just. But sometimes the little things, John. I mean, make you, a world of difference. Yes, yeah, they so definitely do. What are your thoughts on that, John? I, I think what Chris has said is as is true. It, it's just traditional having the women doing whatever they're doing. Mm. And it's actually, again, breaking the mould. Mm. It's yeah, actually, yeah. you know, 
men can look good too. You don't have to be the Mr. Universe with massive rippling muscles mm -hmm. and don't say anything. You can be somebody who does look good and actually takes a, pr a pride in what they do. Because it's not yeah, easy. Right. It's a hard work, isn't it, involved. It's not just getting up there and strutting your stuff. Mm -hmm. There's no. more to it than that. It's, mm -hmm. it's an industry in itself, and I think you, you have to actually meet it halfway. Mm. And I mean, for you, um, Chris, you've, you've, you've said it, it was different, um, and you'd like to sort of make sure that that doesn't happen to other yeah. guys that come into the competition. Um, is, it, is it because... You know, there is, I don't know, is, it, is there a stigma around it, being yeah. Mr. England? Well, I'm or, a lad. Or entering into any of the pageants. I'm a lad, lad from Liverpool and I've got a lot of lad mates and I first, yeah. when I, I first told them... Yeah, what they, was their reaction? Yeah, I got a bit of a <laughs> abuse about it, but just, just a little bit of banter, yeah. like, but eventually they get over it. I don't know whether it's because it's seen that way as lads are meant to be more masculine or, mm. or what, but... In the competition, you're still trying to look good. So, like I said, I train Monday to Friday, and I, I, I still look good. But like John said, it's not all about that. It's, it's about effort now. Like, what like was the most difficult thing? What was the most difficult thing that you, you found? For me, the because because I'd never really done it much, was walking that catwalk in front mm. of hundreds of people, and you just don't know how to walk because you're meant to be upright, shoulders back. And for me, that was new to me. For, so for that, that was the hardest thing for me. But once you get into it, well, I'll strut my stuff any day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, after like the, fir the first walk, the yeah. second walk, yeah. it's, it's OK yeah. then. But, but at first, it, it is really nerve-wracking yeah. walking down yeah. that catwalk. When yes. <laughs> One walk, next second walk, stand back, yes, I'm coming. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and then the music's on and you're there, standing yeah. in the background dancing. Yeah. But because you because you think you're a lad and you, you you're a big male mm. and you don't expect to walk like the girls can walk and strut yeah. and when you're a lad you're just trying to walk normal you know with your legs out so, well with your chest out sorry yeah. um so it, it's it's like you said that i think it, there is a little bit more stigma around it but what an opportunity of, though you yeah. had and john i mean opportunities opportunities arising i mean you know tell us what your thoughts are about that he was just I, in a in a supermarket yes Minding your own business, doing your work, and then suddenly you're wear, here to, to on cover TV <laughs> and you know doing other things, wonderful things with charity and being involved with you know Mr. England. I love hearing stories like Chris's mm -hmm. because so many people have an opportunity, and they they turn it down, they don't go with it. And I'm so pleased you actually took it up. I know you're pleased you took it up, but you know as you were saying, you're getting stick from some of your mates. Oh, this and this, but you know, hey. That's the, that's the way it is. Yeah, exactly. But you've broken the mould, you haven't taken any notice, you've done it, you're successful, you're getting better, you're going to be more successful. And I think it's absolutely wonderful. And I love hearing when people get that opportunity, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are. And I've been around the world dozens of times, and I've, work-wise, and I've seen opportunities just avail themselves, just that little spark. Yeah, and it's just, go for it. Mm. You've only one chance. If you turn that down, you'd still be there. And now it's a, a different ball game. I mean, do you, do you reflect upon that? Do you think if you hadn't have taken perhaps yeah. the advice of, of the young lady who was saying, yeah, go on, you know, go Defin for it? Definitely yeah. reflect about it. Like, it's, it's been a week since the competition, and for me, this, this week's been hectic. It's, it, it's life changing. Like, the amount of people I've got started following me, the f me, me fan base, like before, <laughs> before all this. If you search my name on the internet, not, not <laughs> come up. Now, if you type my name in the internet, I don't know where they've all got it from, but uh, like stuff I haven't even got on there. But everything comes up, and it's just overwhelming to think coming from a supermarket, and now potentially if if things click into place at the right time, mm. I could potentially go even bigger than what than what I am now, and hopefully training hard for Mr. World next next year. I was just about it, to say, is that it, the next step, Mr. World? Yeah, that's the next step for me. So there's going to be a grueling days, a lot of a lot of charity work, um, a lot of things to do. But if, if I win Mr. World, then that's for me. Going, my fan base will go from from mm. that big to mm. huge, and just being a normal lad from Liverpool getting spotted in a supermarket. And I've always worked hard in my life. Just shows that 
things can arise if you always work hard. Mm. And do people recognise you in, in Liverpool? <laughs> it has yeah. done so far. I've yeah. been walking around Liverpool. I've had a few people come up to me saying, you oh, that lad who won Mr England. Yeah. And I go, <laughs> well, <laughs> I did win it, yeah. yeah. But, so it, it's just overwhelming because two weeks ago, I was just a normal lad working in a supermarket. So if someone walked past me, they wouldn't notice me. But now, when I'm walking around the street, some people are noticing me even. But you're embracing like the that. change. Yeah, yeah. embracing Ta the change. Taking it day by day to see what happens. And John, I mean, you you know, you do, you work with so many people of so many different ages. But again, you're young, 22, mm -hmm. 22, yeah. a young, impressionable age. Yes. Opportunities, yeah. take them. Is that what you'd say? Just take them. And, and I, again, I just love what Chris has said. He's mm -hmm. just gone with it and done. And you know, the default side of that is is doing so much for charity as well. Mm -hmm. It's not just all about me, me, me. It's what I am doing and what I can do. And it's utilising that for more than yourself. Mm. And I think that's a, a wonderful thing. And that only makes you even better and better and more humble and more knowledgeable. Whereas all those who cast scorn on you are still here yeah. and you're rising because the more you do, the more you get. Mm. I mean, why do people not take up opportunities, do you think? Why do they, do, why do they let opportunities go by? I think sometimes it's scepticism, and sometimes is people don't believe in themselves. Oh, it, it can't be for me. It's too good to be true. It, it's not real. It's for other people. It's for them. And they read stories, just like Chris, and they say, yes, but it's all right for him. It's all right for Chris, but for me, no, it's not good. But it is. You are just as good to do what you can do in your own time. But you know, if you don't embrace something, it's not going to drag you along. Mm -hmm. It'll go to somebody else. And that's the way it is. You know, when the door knocks, someone knocks on the door, you've got to open it, you've got to go there. Mm -hmm. And it's not always easy, is it? I mean, it was a, I'm, I'm sure it was a big mental turmoil for you when you started. Uh, lots of new things, thoughts, ideas, what, if, how, when, what people yeah, say, definitely. what they do, completely new. But Hey, you do it, don't you? No, yeah, mm. no. And do you, do you relate to what John? Well, definitely, saying. like like John's just said. Then when I started Mr. Liverpool, and the first time I'd ever ever done anything <laughs> like it, that when you see when I seen people like girls who'd done it like a couple of years before, and they were laughing, they probably having a joke about something mm. else. I was thinking, wonder if they're laughing about my walk mm. or, mm. or the way you look or, or the way, way you're or something mm. like that. That's what I was mm. thinking when I first, and then. Like I was shaking the first time I walked down the catwalk and it was only practicing the first time I ever done it because we had the, the rehearsals before the actual night. And um, But when you just see little things like that because it's new to you and you mm. definitely think like my head was working overtime a day laughing about me and uh, am I doing the right thing? Mm. Is that normal Shall John to, to have that sort of you know self-doubt? In anything, not mm. only what Chris has just done but even if you're working in industry or mm. commerce you get to a certain level and sometimes when you've actually been rocketed from here to here because you, you're, you have an aptitude or you've done well, Big step. you then have to actually judge yourself. Is it me? What are they looking at? Am I, you know, but you know, to be quite honest, 90% of the people are looking at you as a professional already. Yeah. They're not looking at you as you're thinking, oh, is this all right? Am I doing this? It's only the second time. They're looking at you for the first time and thinking, gosh, what fabulous guy, he's doing that perfectly. And they're viewing you differently, it's yeah. just your perception. Yes. And it's just, once you've got more into it, your mm. perception changes and then you just really motor yeah, along. Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, that's it, yes. It once you're used to yes, it. yes. <laughs> and is that how you feel now? Yeah, yes. definitely. Now, like, obviously Mr. England was a, a completely different competition. There was a lot more lads when I got there. The, the how, many, how many guys were there in the competition? In the competition, originally there was 24 or 25 but it, it went down like a f a three lads backed out before the competition mm -hmm. then a few never turned up on the night so there was about 19 mm -hmm. 20 uh, on the night but in Mr Liverpool there was only like 8 7 so you don't really think of it but when I turned up there was lads there who were full time models mm -hmm. so he models for big big it's brands very yeah big yeah. brands very experienced there was a lad who won the top model round um there was Josh, who's amazing at charity work. You've, you've got all these different type of lads where the smaller competitions before these events. So you have to win those, do you? Or you, you have to partake in it, those well, before you? For me, or is it, just it was 
partaken in so. all of them, so, so it looks like I've yeah. done a whole and, and builds up. Mm -hmm. But say if you won one of them competition, one of them activities, so like Josh won the charity round, I won the sports round, that got you through to the, the top seven, mm -hmm. where, and then there was a judges vote at the end. Um, so that that's what happened with them rounds. Mm -hmm. A lot, but, but yeah, you know, a lot, a lot, lot to take in. Yes, and and you know, how do you think emotionally? This what what effect does it have on on a, on somebody when they've gone from being, as you say, just an ordinary no. lad from Liverpool to suddenly being a super thrown. lad from Liverpool? Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. Fingers how does that? Yes, no, no, yes. You arrive, you there. Yes. I, I think it's. I, well, I think you've actually handled it exceptionally well, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people go through a lot of consternation, you know, always thinking, is the bubble going to go bang tomorrow? Is it going to burst? Am I going to do this right? Am I going to do that right? But you know, it is going well. And it's going to get even better for you because the yeah. way you're doing it uh, and your mind and what you're saying you, is putting everything into it. And mm. it's just going to get better and better and better. And mm. when it gets better, you get spin-offs, which you don't even know exist at this moment in time. And when those opportunities come along, you grab those because then all of a sudden it's like climbing the mountain. You mm. suddenly reach a plateau and then there's another mountain. Mm. But you yeah, do definitely. it. You do it. And that is success. And you're on your way. And I mean, for uh, being Mr. England now, your goal is to go and be in Mr. World. Yeah. And where would that be? Is that is that? It's next spring. Where there's not a date like which is mm. properly focused mm -hmm. yet, but. I, it's next spring and it's in the Philippines. Okay. So. So you go out. You go out there. I go out there. Mm -hmm. And I would assume that would be a much bigger competition, of course. Well, there's there's 120 countries that are involved right. involved in it. I think so. so there's 120 lads. So there's a lot, a lot so of. Uh, <laughs> and how how are you nervous about that, Chris? Um, or is that something you looking well, forward to? Well, from from like all this experience, like I said, the thinking around it, can I do this? Now, for me. The lad who gave me the title, I want to do better than him. He f he seeded fourth in Mr. England, so for me to do better than him, I'm going to seed in the top three, and I I want to do that because it just be overwhelming. And then they've picked me, an ordinary lad from Liverpool who's never done nothing like that. So I want to give something back to them people because they've given me the chance to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to obviously, like I've said, put a lot of hard work. I'm going to do. A lot of charity things, like me, me charity thing. I've always done charity things since growing up through uni, through school. But I worked with, with a place in, in Liverpool which um, basically does disabled people. Mm. And it, it's worked with them and gets them into sports, giving them self-esteem and confidence. Mm. I wish you every success in the future, Chris. Thank you so much for joining thank me. You. And John, thank you so much thank for joining you. us again. Thank you. That's it for today. I'd like to thank all of my guests for joining me here on Copper TV. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so by Facebook or Twitter at Big Centre TV. Come back and join me again very soon. Take care. Bye.